God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Their heart is established and will not shrink. They have given freely to the poor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away.
Linda, would you guys join me again when we did Oslo? Next time you're here, it's really just lonely out here. So having you guys come and help me read the Gospel is, is very cool. Do you remember that that's what that book is called? Look at this big red book. We looked at this once before. This book is right here on the altar. We call this the Gospel book. This big book. It looks like a special book, doesn't it? It's got kind of gold. And it's got a special ribbon, doesn't it? And you know what this has inside it? It has God's words for us. This is, this is the Gospel book. It has God's words for us. This comes from the Bible. You know, we so get so used to seeing Bibles around, we don't really think about it, especially when little kids, right? God gave us these words. And he gave these words to us so we could read them and think about them together, right? Which sounds kind of funny sometimes because, as I said, we get very used to that book, you that Bible being up on the shelf, don't we? Kind of going, yeah, that's that thing. You know what? It's a really, really good book. It's full of stories. Can anybody tell me what that book has told us about Jesus since we thought, thought about Jesus? Can anybody tell me that? What do we know about Jesus in that book, you guys? What do we know about Jesus? Anybody? Yeah. He, oh, God, how God did, right? That was before Jesus helped to help David defeat the Goliath. Yeah, that's a pretty cool story in that book, isn't it? Yeah. What else do we know? What do we know about Jesus? What was Jesus for? Yeah. Um, for the Ark. No, and then the Ark. Well, you guys have your Old Testament down. That's right. That's right. God sent his regular being. And Noah floated and saved the animals in the Ark. How about Jesus? Do you remember when Jesus was born? What holiday did they remember? Jesus was Yeah, Christmas. Christmas time. And how was Jesus? Where was he born? Was he born in a castle? No. Was he born like in a really special? No, he was born in that. He was born. He was born in that. In an angel. In a manger. What's a manger? I have a baby that pops up in the castle. Really? And so Jesus was a baby like your baby, and maybe had a castle. That's right. Hey guys. And he was in a manger. You know what a manger is? It's something the animals get out. Isn't that funny? Because there wasn't any room. Remember that story? There was no room in the, in the inn. So Jesus' family had to go and stay in the barn where the animals were. So when Jesus came on, they, there was a new little baby with his dad right in the manger where the animals were. Some fresh straw. I'll bet it was nice and clean, don't you think? They kind of made sure it was nice and clean. So he wasn't born in a fancy place, was he? And then do you remember, anybody remember what his dad did? What did Joseph do? Juliet, do you remember this? Um, Jesus' dad. What kind of jobs did he have? Carpenter. He was a carpenter. That's right. And they lived in kind of a simple town, didn't they? They didn't live in a fancy place. And when Jesus grew up, Jesus taught a lot of interesting things. And he taught about the world being really different than it is now. Right? And one of the things he taught about was how important it was to love yourself. Right? To love who you are who you are becoming to be, the special person you are, but also be humble. Anybody know what that word means? Humble. What do you think about that word when I say that word? What do you think that means? Yeah. Don't, don't get overconfident. Don't get overconfident, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Don't get overconfident. Don't brag about it. Do what? Don't brag about it. Don't brag about it. Sometimes, you know, when you're in a group, have you ever been in a group where there's somebody who really is super cool in that group that kind of everybody wants to get close to? Have you ever been in a class where there was one kid who just seemed like a really cool kid and everybody kind of wanted to have that kid know them a little bit, maybe sit closer to that kid? And Jesus is saying, you know what, that's not all it's cracked up to be, and that's not who we're supposed to be. So Jesus was always making things a little bit different putting emphasis on being ourselves, right, and caring for others. So has anybody here ever been a line leader at school? Yeah. Whoa, so everybody's been a line leader. Cool, is that, now, how does it feel when you're a line, is that a big day when you're a line leader? Is that kind of cool? What happens when you're a line leader? Yeah. You get to lead the, um, you get to lead the class um, to where you're going. You get to lead the whole class where you're going, right? Do you get to get in line first? Uh, so you get to get out of your desk and go, yeah. Have you ever been a line leader? Yeah. What else did you get to do when you were a line leader? Did you maybe get to open the door for everybody else? Uh, yes. No. Was there somebody else who opened the door? 
Sometimes there's a second job, so maybe it's easy work. Yeah. But you're kind of in charge of taking people to the gym or lunch or the playground, right? When you're line leader. Do you think that we can make a line right here? Okay, and you're gonna be my line leader. Come on, let's do it. Are you ready? Let's make a line. One, two, and here's our line leader. Hudson's gonna be our line leader. Can you guys come get in line behind him? Let's get in line. You ready? Come get in line. Let's stand up on our feet. You ready? We'll stand up on our feet. And we're gonna make a line. So our line go, our line can go this way. Oh, look at these great backpacks. The one's in there. Okay. Come down this way. Okay, 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 okay. All right, come on down here. Come down here. Okay, would you be would you be our caboose? Would you come be here? Okay. Wow, look at that beautiful line, you guys. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so Gaston will lead us up. Can you lead us a little ways? One, two, three, stop. Okay, let's all follow. You ready? Let's stretch our line out. We've got to follow our line leader. So where else do you think our line leader might take us? To New York? To New York, that would be fun. I'd like to go to New York. Thank you. What if you take us up and around and back down? Can you do that? Okay, we've got to follow our line leader. Everybody's got to walk on your best walking feet. I know everybody's trying this at school, right? Your best walking feet. Good job. Ooh, we have a fast line leader, don't we? Your line leader is hustling. <laughs> Some of the smaller legs are having to run to keep up with our line leader. Okay, how about you come and line up right here? We'll stop our line. Oh, here it goes. It took a long time for our train to get here. It's walking fast. So, the line leader was important because he led us where we were going, right? Can I tell you a secret? Guess who Jesus probably would think was the most important person in this whole line? Right here. Because guess what? The person at the back, our caboose, is making sure everybody gets there safely, right? The line leader might be setting us in the direction, but guess what the caboose does? It makes sure everybody gets there safely, right? Nobody gets lost. Everybody gets to go, right? So every one of us is incredibly important to Jesus. Every single solitary one of us. But in our world, in our world that we live in, that tells us the line leader is most important, guess what Jesus would say? Really, the person who's bringing up the rear, who's helping and making sure everybody gets there safely, is probably the most important job. Yeah, that's pretty funny to think about, isn't it? Yeah. So next time you're caboose, and you know you've got the job, okay? A really important job. And the next time you're a line leader, well, you remember that's an important job too because you get everybody where they're going, don't you? Hey, well, thanks, you guys. Will you come back up in a few minutes and we'll bless backpacks together? Okay, thank you, thank you, guys. Thanks for helping me. You can leave them back when you bring back. Okay, whatever you want to do. Okay, love? All right, good morning, everybody. And thanks to the children for helping us kind of explore this gospel. It is so awesomely good to be back after vacation. You know, vacation is this great moment where we kind of, um, you know, physically change our space, right? We go to someplace different, hopefully. I'm really kind of over vacations. I go to someplace different, and it just sort of renews and reinvigorates us, and that's such a powerful thing. But it also does something else that's pretty important. It reminds us that we are not indispensable. You know, the world goes on turning without me here. <laughs> Wonderful people showed up to help lead and organize and empower this community to keep praying and moving ahead together. And people who had to go to the hospital or got sick got calls from beautiful, wonderful prayer ministers who called them to say, are you doing okay? You know, there's this wonderful sense that, you know, it's, I am very proud and humbled to be part of you, but the world is not revolved around me. And that's always a really good reminder to have, and actually a really deeply gospel reminder today, isn't it? So the other thing I got to do was on vacation, I went back to a place that reminded me of being this age. I went back down to the area where I grew up, Norfolk, down in the Tidewater area, where I went every summer from the time I was about seven until I was a teenager and switched to Episcopal Church camp. I went to Triple R camp. And Triple R was a Bible, uh, a Baptist camp, a summer camp. 
And we learned, we went there to learn how to ride horses, and how to take care of horses, and we learned how to um, paddle a canoe, and how to get our canoe upright when it is tipped over, we got swamped, right? And you know what, we learned how to do that in the middle of Back Bay with all the snakes that were there. I will never ever get over the fact that I had to flip a canoe next to a snake in water, it was just not that good. But we all survived. And every summer, every as I got ready to go to camp again the next year, and I packed my foot locker, remember those you took foot lockers with you? And I packed my foot locker with my boots and my bathing suit and all my t-shirts. I also put in my foot locker my kind of dog-eared paperback copy of the Good News Bible. And with that, I took a highlighter and a pen and a notebook. Because at camp, what we learned was that life is about walking through experiences like learning how to swamp my canoe with a paddle in one hand and my Bible in the other. That's what they taught me. I don't know if they know that's what they taught me. I think they were hoping they were teaching me, you know, that I was memorizing verses and I was doing all kinds of good things like that. And I'm sure they were hoping I would turn out to be a good person. But I, but they, what I took away from that was how valuable it was to take that Bible in one hand with me as I headed out to the archery field. Because after we shot bows and arrows, we were going to sit down and talk about the scripture for that day. And I'm incredibly grateful to those Southern Baptists for helping me through that time and showing me that incredibly valuable lesson. And it's one of the reasons why I so believe in offering classes like we have had here this morning, where we sit down with our newspaper, or we sit down with our New York Times, or whatever it is we have, our New Yorker, or we bring our life to what the gospel is that day, and we have a conversation. And I was telling AJ and Katie at our class this morning, I always want to rewrite my sermon after we have that discussion, because there's so many good points that come up as we talk about how is this being lived out in our world today. In a great sermon given at Virginia Theological Seminary last spring at their graduation, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, um, uh, Rowan Williams, gave up just an amazingly beautiful sermon where he talked about how desperately the world needs theologians. How desperately the world needs theologians. Because theology is the work of making sense of what God is doing in creation and God is doing in our lives. And it's giving witness to it in the world. What God is doing in the practical, in the mundane moments of our lives, as well as the mountaintop moments of our lives. And today's reading starts us off at a supper, at a dinner. One of the more mundane things we do in ancient times, they would gather for supper, and today we gather for supper. And at both, we would gather friends and partners that we work with and have conversation. The difference, the greatest difference probably between the two is the context. Yeah, the context of the setting. Because in Jesus' day, dinners were, were rarely events that happened where people of unequal power ate together. It was usually a time of gathering your social peers together with you. And it was a time of building connections. Right? So you're going to invite people that you want to connect to. And in fact, if you were a socially elevated person, you would risk your status by eating at a dinner where there were people who were more socially inferior. This is what comes up in 1 Corinthians when we hear about the church wrestling, the newly emerging Christian church, about having dinner, having a meal together. What does that look like to a culture that is not experiencing that? It was a deeply socially coded ritual where who invited you and who was invited and where you sat and what room you were in and what you ate was very much determined by how you stacked up in that community. And it was always anticipated that when invited, you would return the invitation. So I have no doubt there were many invitations that went unaccepted because the person felt, I simply can't return it with that level of dinner or wine or whatever else was going to happen at that dinner. So we hear tonight that Jesus is attending his dinner as a guest, and he is being closely watched. That's the second line. He is being closely watched. In part because he's been invited by a Pharisaic household, by a Pharisee's household. And that's a community of people who very much believed in knowing the right way to do things. Right? The religious sort of right way to do things. And it's how they had held on to their identity as a people. 
because they knew and they followed the same precepts. I know that if you did this, if you did certain things certain ways, right, you knew my language and we came from the same place. Hearing this story today and hearing about the context of the dinner, it's easy for us to say, this doesn't have a lot that's translatable to our world, isn't it? Our dinners are rarely stacked like these are, unless maybe you're in the military and you know, the three stars are one table and it kind of works its way down. Rarely are our homes quite so stratified. stratified. But I have noticed in church communities where I've served, and we've had a meal, say, for the homeless, like we would hear during hypothermia week, and we would invite whoever was there serving the dinner to then take a plate and go sit down next to somebody who, just, who had spent the day living outside on the streets. And people were often very challenged by that. And the first thing they'd say to me is, but what do we talk about? What do I say? Because it's hard to imagine that somebody whose life has been so different than yours, and you might have something in common. And that is exactly what Jesus sets on to you. Jesus says each and every one of us has something to share. Each and every one of us has something to bring to the conversation. Each and every one of us deserves to be seen. No one is outside of this meal. No one is too sick, too consumed with substance abuse, too divorced, too you name it, to be kept away from this table. And in coming among us, Jesus models something that theologians call kenosis. Julia, that's a good big word for you, kenosis. Yeah. That's what Jesus models, and it means self-emptying. And theologian Sally McFay says that kenosis is accepting the limits, accepting of limits for the good of self and others. Putting limits on things for the good of self and others and for the good of creation. Hold that in contrast with the world we live in. With the market-oriented consumer way our world encourages us to continue to consume more and more and more. Compare that to the focus in our culture today on the individual and on my success, my wealth. Compare that to the meal Jesus calls us to, to the Eucharist, which is a meal that begins with prayers that point to stories of healing, points to stories of sharing, of anointing, points to death and reminds us to look to Jesus to see how he uses that meal to bring himself, to give of himself, to give life to others. The Eucharist continually proclaims abundance, and it feeds us, and it transforms us through the mystery of Jesus' self-giving, through the mystery of Jesus' kenosis. And the Eucharist is a place of hospitality, right? It's a place of truthfulness where we are laid bare, where our souls and bodies are connected to everybody else around that table. And when someone is missing, when they're not there, all of us lose someone. It's a place all of our quality. And it's a place where we take only what we need so there's enough for everyone. This week, as I got ready for our Bible study class, I was reading through the Washington Times, the Washington Post, thinking about, about this notion of, of our lives and how we see the gospel scripture get lived out. I came across a story about a soldier, a soldier who was at the airport in Afghanistan in those last terrible days as the city was falling and people were frantically trying to get inside the safe walls around that airport. This particular very young soldier looked out across the crowds of people and their desperate, desperate need, and he saw a little girl who appeared to be about eight years old. And in one arm she had an infant, and by the other hand she had about a four-year-old. And she was wandering through the crowd crying, and from what this 20-year-old soldier could tell, the baby was no longer breathing. And as he looked just over her head, there was a, a man on the roof of a car who was clearly trying to get to her, but he couldn't. The crowd was preventing it. And so he pushed out into that melee, into that craziness, at his own, at risk of his own life, and certainly going way above his own grief. 
And he grabbed that little girl and the children with her and brought them inside and signaled the medic. And they were able to get the baby breathing again and get the baby moved off to hospital care. And then he pushed out again into that crowd. He made his way to the father and he brought the father through. And it turns out that the man had the paperwork he needed. He had just not been able to get close and he and his children had gotten separated and he was absolutely desperate. This soldier, as I read this article, he acted not out of self-interest, not even out of his duty. In fact, there's a good chance he got in trouble for going beyond what he should have done. But he acted out of humanity, out of hospitality, out of love. And he did so as Jesus teaches us today, not with no thought about how he might benefit from it. In fact, to this day, he doesn't know what happened to that family, except that they got on a plane and came to safety. He acted out of our common humanity. Theologian Christine Paul reminds us that when we partake of the Eucharist, through our humanity, we are connected to each other through Christ's body. In fact, she has this beautiful line. She says, we are pierced at that table by the memory of bodies not here. Bodies of the homeless. Bodies of those suffering substance abuse. Bodies of those who feel unwelcome at this table for any reasons. And as Christians, we offer hospitality because we have experienced it in our bodies, through our humanity. Because this dinner, this mundane meal, reminds us that it is not mundane at all, but that it makes us part of the body of Christ. And it completely puts paid to the notion that we are alone in this world. And reminds us, and reminds us that God is with us always. We are gathered here today to join in both the profound and mundane act of making a meal making a dinner. Today we'll say our prayers together, we'll break that bread, and then we'll eat it, and we'll share it. And it will set us out into the world, back out into our complex, busy, overwhelming lives as theologians, knowing that even though we live in this complex web, we are interconnected and we are deeply loved and held by God. And by being theologians, we are able to help others see that too. Amen. <coughs> Please join me in inciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God for God, light for light, true God from true God, begotten of man. Of one being with the Father, to whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate with the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified in the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and to see the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge my baptism we will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
morning with prayers that people are formed for, which can be found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service book. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all the reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for our ministry with our Hispanic neighbors and ask your blessing, grace, and guidance on our journey to open ourselves more and more to the abundant gifts of a diverse community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Ruth, John, Melissa and Daddy Gorham and family, Kathy Maddox, Libby, Betty, Adriana, Leandra, Janet and family, Barbara, Katie, Kathy, Lisa and family, Joseph, Marvin, John and Beth, Jane and family, Ralph, Danny, Doug and Jacob, Mary Ann, Ted, Susan, John, Patrick, Carol and Don, Virginia, Dorothy, Jim, Joan, Virginia, Priscilla, and L.B. For all those who are caring for others, and any other prayers or thanksgivings that you may wish to offer, silently, aloud, or in the comments online. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and what we have not done one of them. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive you all your sins, for our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you.
Carlton, and I'm your Vestry Person of the Week. My commission is Membership and Innovation. Um, I wanted to call out a few reminders in the bulletin from some announcements. First off, I wanted to uh, thank Linda Egan for all of her time here. This uh, week will be her last week with us, and we've certainly enjoyed her this summer, and we appreciate all that you've done for us. Thank you so much. Exciting to see all the kids here today. I'm sure that they're here for getting the blessings of their backpacks. Hopefully, all of you brought your briefcases and whatever you need to have blessed this morning. Um, we're also in the process of updating our parish directory. So, if your address or phone number has changed, please contact the office and ask um, them to update it for you. Uh, we have a book discussion group coming up on September 20th at 2 p.m. We're going to be discussing Karen F6 Leonardo Swans. If you would like to partake in that, please contact Christine Maloney or Janet Quinn. We're also looking for um, office volunteers, so if you're interested in that and can help out, please contact the parish office. And save the date for September 11th. We're going to have a kickoff Christian formation ministry time where we're going to talk about what we're going to be doing this fall with Bible studies and book clubs and things like that. So please take a look and come and join us for that. And then I also wanted to give you a quick reminder to please sign up for Shrine Lent that is coming up quicker than we can believe. October is just around the corner. And that's all I had. I know Janet had some announcements and so did Margaret. Thank you. Um, today is Clean Hopper Refrigerator Sunday, so we have a very tiny snack hour. Hey kids, there's Oreos, but everybody gets one Oreo. <laughs> but there's goldfish, like tons of goldfish, so don't worry about it. Take as many goldfish as you want. Um, we're looking for coffee hour hosts and hostesses, and I'll put that in the bulletin. We have about 10 hosts and hostesses now, so you do it about three times, up to four times a year. We have a few more volunteers that would, um, that would spread, spread the joy and variety of, of coffee hours. So I'll put that in bulletin on Margaret Kirk. You can contact Margaret or Mary Fran if you're interested in hosting a coffee hour a couple times a year. Um, if you've done it before or if it's first time, well, we'll show you how to do that. And big thanks to Chris Foster who has donated money for a teapot. So we won't hear our whistle on the team live. Uh, it will soon be arriving by Amazon. I'm so excited. But uh, there will be a whistle on the team live in a little bit. Yeah, so we have some new hosts coming in. Um, Jeff Hall will be joining us. That was he called next Saturday, September 3rd. We're meeting at the Neves Gulf Creek Boardwalk in Rich, Richmond, Woodbridge. And we'll carpool from the church at 9.15 or you can meet us there at 10. There are two things that I really like about boardwalk hikes is that you're on a flat, level surface and you're looking down on the wildlife around you. And then the second one is my very favorite wild identification app is the people with the really big lenses on their, their cameras and you can say, what are you looking at? And then you can look too. And there are lots of them in this boardwalk as well. So I hope to see you all there. If you have any questions, please check in with me. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks very much. Good morning. I'm Carrie Connor, the director here at St. Christopher's. And it is good to be back with you again. It's wonderful to have the kids here. I know it's been a busy week. Did everybody start school this week? Yeah. Who started school? Everybody's back in school, right? Started school yet? Yeah. yeah. South of here, they're still going back after Labor Day event. But yes, I know. We are back in school. So thanks for bringing your backpack. It's already gotten to get broken in, hasn't it, a little bit? Yeah, <laughs> gotten some use. Welcome to everybody joining us online uh, on Facebook. It's good to have you with us as well. Uh, please feel free to reach out uh, to the church office so we can get you connected in any way you'd like to be. Uh, it is good to be back together. Can the kids bring your backpacks up? I brought mine. Mine's not nearly as pretty as the rest of you guys. I've got to work on that. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm feeling very, very under, <laughs> underwhelmed by my backpack here. Come on up. We'll set them up here, you guys. All right? Come on up with your backpack. Yeah. Ooh, look at these. Hey, is this a special bag? Yeah. Okay, so you can 
a little more preschool before kindergarten. That's a great idea. I'm going to use my backpack. I think I got your name on it. You got stars. Is this a giraffe? Oh, that's the cutest thing. Let me see who's on there. We've got unicorns. Oh, yeah. Middle school? No, high school. No? Elementary school? Sixth grade. Oh, see, someplace sixth grade is middle school. That looks like very, yeah. <laughs> no longer giraffe backpacks. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We've got a giraffe land. Hey, guys. Oh, we've got Spider Man and cool stripes that we hear. Huh? Oh, look now. You're going to go in the dark. Huh? We'll go find you, even in the dark at night. Have you got your preschool bag with you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Looks like somebody made that for you. What's on your backpack? You got a pencil. <gasps> and what are those? Scissors. Do you think you'll need those at school this year? Pencils, scissors, all those good things? Well, guess what else you need this year? You need some blessings. And we're going to bless you and bless your backpack. And then you know what I need you guys to all do before you leave today? We're actually going to hold the doors closed so everybody helps me. We're going to write out some blessings for our preschool teachers this year. So I have a whole bunch of post-it notes out on the table, parish hall, and I'm going to ask everybody to make at least one or two notes. Yes, buddy. That's a great way to do blessing. I love that. You want to show everybody that? How do we do blessing? Ah, oh, we can all do that. Yes, we'll do that in just a second. But we're going to write notes that are blessings for our preschool teachers, and then I'm going to put them all over the classroom doors. So tomorrow, when they come in for their first day for teacher week, they'll have notes from all of us at St. Christopher saying, we love you, love your kids. Okay? Can you guys help me with that? All right. So everybody, in front of students, everybody's going to write notes to a preschool teacher um, so that they feel the love from this congregation, too. Okay, yeah. should we bless? How do we do that with our hands again? You want to show me? Okay, can everybody make blessing hands? No. Yeah, no. let's make blessing hands. Are you ready? No. no. Are you ready? Should we make blessing hands? One, two? Let's make blessing hands. No. No, okay. All right, the Lord be with you. We'll make our blessing hands and pull our heads. Put our heads down. No. God of wisdom, we give you thanks for schools, for classrooms, for teachers no. and kids who fill them every no. day. We thank you for new beginnings, new books, new ideas, sharp pencils, pointy crayons, and blank pages yeah. waiting to be filled. We give you thanks for the gift of mistakes and trying again. Help us remember that asking the right question is as important as the right answer. Today, we give you thanks for these, your children, and we ask you to bless them with curiosity, understanding, and respect. May their backpacks be a sign to them that they have everything you need to grow and learn this year. And may they be guided by your love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who as a child at the temple showed his longing to learn, and as an adult taught by story and example. Amen. I love. You have a rough morning today? Sometimes I have those too. Okay, everybody, backpacks are blessed. Ready? You got to put on your backpack. Are you ready? Okay, here you go. Let's put a tag. We're going to put tags on moms and dads to help with this. Putting tags on your backpack. Okay, so this backpack is blessed at St. Christopher's. Okay, it is blessed for the whole year. But you can come back and get another blessing. There you go. You ready? There's that for your backpack. Here you go. What, love? Can you hang it on the inside? Yeah. Oh, I know. Sometimes schools get kind of touchy on the outside. Okay, there you go. You ready? Should I put one on my bag since my bag got this too? I need a uniform on my bag, though, unfortunately. We have lots of these for anybody else who would like to come and have your bag. Oh, that'd be great. So, walk around and see if anybody would like to have their bag, a blessing from their bag. That would be great. Thank you. So, we just had a few of those. So, let's start with the tags, okay? And let's see. Let's see if we have any. We'll see at the end. How about that? Okay. All right, beloved ones. Oh, there you go. You have a hook inside your bag for it. That's perfect. And it matches your color scheme. Huh? It's kind of a little pastel. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries we need to recognize today? Birthdays, anniversaries. Anybody got a birthday, anniversary? Wow. Oh, you guys got an anniversary? Which one? Oh, 
Oh, that's a big one. Congratulations. Hey, so I need you guys to completely bless. Now that you're extra blessing, you just leave your backpacks. Come on, you guys, stand up. Everybody stand up for Jesus. We're going to come on over here. Okay, let me show you something. You ready, Violet? Will you help? we got to put a hand right over here. We're going to put our hands out. Can you put your hands out of the mom and dad? We're going to put our hands out. Okay. You ready? Right here. We're going to come bless. Can you guys come help me bless up? This is their 12th wedding anniversary. That's awesome. And you have a birthday, too? It's your birthday? Ah, how about we stay here for a second and you let us bless you too. So we gotta bless and a birthday and an anniversary. Are you guys ready? Hands out? Come on over. Okay, we're gonna say, Gracious God, here, hold up your blessing hand. Hold up your blessing hand. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for marriages that keep us happy. Thank you for birthdays that give us another year. Thank you for cake and ice cream and beautiful children to help us move through life. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Jesus, for parents who love us, right? And help us get through and help bring us, help us celebrate this next year and all keeping us strong, whole, and happy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary, you guys. I'm so excited. We got a busy one ahead of you. <laughs> I did for a couple of years ago. Did you? Yeah. That's a big birthday for us. Do you want to get your bags out? We'll go there, but mom and dad will help tie stuff on. Beloved, thank you. Thank you for your help greeting our teachers this year. Um, <laughs> thank you for putting up with all these beautiful uh, interruptions to our service because this is what it's really all about in so many ways. It is great to have the kids with us and be part of things. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as offering and sacrifice to God.
Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And for by water and Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Let's try this again. Prayer C. <laughs> God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law to open the way for us, the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> Lead us not into temptation, but 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let's pray. <coughs> God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Beloved, see that you give peace among yourselves and love one another. Follow the example of good men and women of old, and God will comfort you and help you, both in this world and in the world that is to come. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you.